Hey, good morning, everyone, or afternoon over in the UK, since I am on the Mizuno Golf Europe page. So I'm excited to do that. We've been doing a fun little thing um, lately where we've been talking to a lot of our pros while we're on, while everyone's kind of on, in their own location and not really out touring. Um, so we're trying to continue that series today. We're going to have Scott Gregory on in just a few minutes. Scott Gregory, I mean, what an amateur career he's had, and he's uh, turned pro, I guess, a year or two, year two ago, maybe, but he is going to be a name that you're going to know if you don't already. So right before we hop over to him, I got Frederick Lindblom on here as well. I'm going to add him to this so with him right now, have him hop on. Hey, hey, Fred, what's going on? Hi, bud. Oh, you there? It's a little chip. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. It got a little bit choppy. Is that from my end or your end? That's probably my end. Okay. <laughs> How are you, man? How are things going? All good. Um, finally getting a little warmer in Sweden. Maybe good. We'll play a little bit more, but uh, super excited to start with, uh, to talk, well, to listen to this live because what an amateur career Scott and Gregory had and, uh, just to see kind of the difference between the amateur uh, level to the pro level. I've had a lot of people asking me before this slide, you know, what's the difference between the elite amateur level and pro level and who's better to ask, you know, the kid won mm -hmm. pretty much anything, everything as an amateur. And right. He's getting his feet wet now in the pro rank. So I know I had a really good final semester in college. I was mm -hmm. player of the year in my conference and <laughs> The first pro event I played, I shot six under in two rounds on a fairly difficult course and missed the cut by one. So, uh, <laughs> it is a, it's a whole new ball game, right? <laughs> it is unbelievable. The depth in anywhere in the world. I've played tournaments in Asia, mm -hmm. Malaysia, everywhere. And, uh, you know, you're in the middle of nowhere and there's studs everywhere. So right. it's a different level for sure. So it'd be very interesting to see. If you could ask me some questions about that, I think it would be very popular. For sure, I will, for sure. And it's interesting how it's like, you know, you had a good amateur career. He had an incredible amateur career. But to go from the top the top of everything and the confidence that comes with that to then be almost, I mean, kicked down so many rungs, it's, it's got to it's gotta mess with you mentally, right? Yeah, you got to grind, man. It's just, you go, you go from being a big fish, you know, in a little pond, and then mm -hmm. you just want to many others you know you know that your good golf is good enough mm -hmm. but if you try to keep the head up because you are going to get beat you get beat more times than you win in golf obviously right and uh, it can get difficult i mean i struggle with it a little bit i thought you know i'd be on the corn ferry in two years i'd be on the pg tour in three years and that, that hasn't been the case <laughs> so right now, so, but keep the spirit up and know that you're good enough and you know good things sometimes take time for sure. And well, and I, and I was actually listening to a podcast with Scott just the other day where he was talking about, you know, turning pro and what it's been like. And, you know, basically, I think one of the questions that they asked of him was like, it, does he always think he was the most talented or just the hardest worker? And it's it really interesting. I loved his take where he said, I just outwork everybody, which I thought was a really, really cool thing. And, you know, I think that's what it takes to understand that where once you see that, hey, I'm not just going to come out here and win, you got to work for it. I think that's the right mindset for things. Definitely. And sometimes in college, you know, you got enough talent, things come pretty easily, easy for you, you know. You can win mm -hmm. on that level without really, really working hard. I've seen that from some other pros that I know that, you know, they dominate. They were really good in college, won, had great careers, and then they kind of, get discouraged and they don't put in the work and then you become an accountant instead. Right. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's like, if you're going to take that, you know, the next step, which is hard work. So mm -hmm. You're right. And well, and that's why I've loved following your journey as well, because you, I love watching you on Instagram, constantly putting in the work, focusing on short game, focusing on, on your swing, everything. It's, it's really, it's inspiring and it's cool just because, it's so funny how people who are good golfers, scratch golfers, think they're close. But yeah. man, the the level of difference between myself, 
you, a Scott, and then some of the other guys we talked to. It's it's crazy, but it all comes from work. Yeah, it does. And I mean, I mean, a good a scratch player on a good day maybe can you know be close, but it's just that low level has to be your worst golf has to be so good to be mm-hmm. able to you know still make cuts and still get it, climb the ranks. It's really what it is. I mean, the, a scratch golfer's best golf still not as good as a pro golfer, but at least it's decent. Right. That low. You know, like scratch golfer still shoots 80 every other day round, you know? Right. Yeah. But you can't do it on this level. I mean, I, I struggled a little bit last year on the PG Tour Latino America, and I mm-hmm. was shooting 72, 71, no chance. I mean, right. I missed, the cut. I missed the cut. I remember in Jamaica, the Jamaican Open, I finished birdie holding one on my last two holes. <laughs> and I'm, up by one. I shot three under Mr. So <laughs> you needed a zero on the last hole. <laughs> imagine I made a one on the last hole, par three, the ninth hole, my 18th hole, 180 yards. And I, I just made a one. And I just thought to myself, holy heck, I just made a cut on number. And then some <laughs> played, you know, good in the end and lapped me. And I missed it by one. That's, that's, that's actually a pretty cool story, though. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's one of those, like, it's kind of cool, but it's heartbreaking at the same time. <laughs> Absolutely. But th- there's no doubt you left it all on the table if you did that, right? <laughs> yeah, but then, you know, you go into news, like the media center after the round, and everyone wants to talk to you, and I'm just over there, like, I've already right. realized by then that I got, and I was like, yeah, it was fun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, so, no, so what no. have you been up to lately? I'm just grinding, man. Just practicing over here. Sweden has been open. We can all play golf. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, I hope this isn't from my end. On the side called Short Game Game. A lot of practice aids. So if you haven't checked that out, check it out. Boom. We will throw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> but, it's uh, pretty so cool, I'm actually. I'm, I'm very curious. <laughs> yeah. So most golfers are doing something on the side now because there are no tournaments. So I know Jens Fodring is right. a European tour player. He's in the uh, the check-in desk at the, my local golf course. You know, it's just funny. Like, I'm taking oh, care no. of all the juniors at the course. He's at the reception. You know, you have two, two kind of mm-hmm. tour players or professional golfers doing, you know, regular club work. And it, it's kind of right. funny at the same time. But you, you do what you got to do, man. It's nothing to play. It's yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, that's good. And I love it that at least it keeps you right there and it keeps you super connected and you know exactly what you're we're, we're fighting towards. So, you know, it's just a matter of time before we're all out playing again everywhere and then get the tournament golf going again. I know it's coming up, but it's going to be interesting to get uh, back back tournament ready just because it's, it's different than when you're out there just playing on your own. Yeah, I mean, it's, you can't even compare it, really. I mean, we had, I've been able to play some like local under the radar kind of club tournaments, but you know, mm-hmm. with your friends and you feel nothing. <laughs> so it's like, right. you gotta, you gotta, but to feel that like a little pressure and, and grinding over some pots, it's just, I, I, I can't feel it when I'm not really under the gun. So you need that. I mean, it's going to sure. be interesting to see what happens now when tournaments get back, who can, who's prepared and who's mm-hmm. just kind of winging it and, uh, how players react to uh, being in contention and stuff like that. We'll see. It'd be very interesting. Yeah. It's going to be great. So I'm going to, I'm going to let you go, go get some practice in and then I'm going to switch over to Scott right now, but Hey, I appreciate you checking in and, uh, and hit him well and good, good work last week on Instagram live. I know we've kind of been going back and forth doing these. So that was awesome. Yeah. That, when you're busy, I have to step in. That's what David said. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I feel bad for that because you're gonna you're better than I am at it. So, <laughs> all right. Yep. Good to see you, Fred. Yep. Bye. All right. So I'm gonna check real quick and see if uh, see if Scott's ready to go. Give me one second. Here he is, right here. I'm gonna add him in, and we'll be good to go. Hey, Scott, what's going on? You all right? How are you? I'm doing very well. How about yourself? Yeah, good. Thank you. Excellent. So sorry. Sorry, I'm a minute or two behind picking up on you. So <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. How are things going? I know uh, I, we haven't 
formally met, but you know, I know a lot about you and following your not only amateur career, but then your young professional career as well. And we're very excited to have you as really a, one of the up and comers on the Mizuno staff. So I couldn't be more excited to meet you and I'm excited to meet you in person when that happens coming up soon. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so talk to me about what you've been up to. So, uh, so tell me, tell everybody where you are and what, what's been going on. But first, before that, I was just going to say, you know, those who don't know Scott super well, um, incredible amateur career, British Am champion, um, or amateur champion over there. I'm over in the U.S., so of course we always <laughs> throw that on the front end of it. But played in most of the majors already, so good experience. I know you had, got to play in the Masters; it probably doesn't get much cooler than that. And then uh, a couple couple wins rolling right into uh, right into all of this nonsense that's gone on. So I mean, you maybe were one of the last ones to get a win in the world, right? Yeah, potentially. It was. <laughs> I mean, in the UK, it was two days before the lockdown, so <laughs> pretty close. <laughs> That's pretty good. Which means you are in great form. So you know how? What have you done, and what what have the last couple months looked like for you? Um, it's been tricky. We had probably well, I think it was about seven weeks just being indoors, only allowed to go out for shopping and medication and things like that. So I took it as an opportunity to kind of work on the swing. There's a few things that. I kind of needed to work on a little bit and it gave me a chance to kind of fast track that in a way because mm -hmm. ordinarily it'd be a making little tweaks here and there as the weeks go on playing competitively but you kind of get to go back to the drawing board because I mean the reality is in terms of proper competitive golf challenge tour main tour we've probably got even still a month to maybe two months before it really gets started so it's a good opportunity to try and improve my game and different things like that. Did you have specific things you were looking for that you were like, well, I've never had this amount of time to commit to it, so I want to make a drastic change? Or did you try to keep stuff, um, just try to keep stuff fresh? Because you, had, you were playing great, obviously. Yeah, I was playing great. And I had, I had things that I was already, I kind of, each year I have different things that I want to try and tick off in a way. And it, it's just given me time to, to dedicate a large amount of time to changing it, really, which mm -hmm. I haven't really had since I was an AM. Because, I mean, as an AM, we had probably, what, five, six months off between events from the end of the year to the start of the year. So loads of time to kind of just rebuild mm -hmm. everything and rip it apart. So it's been kind of cool to have that amount of time, a couple of months, just to really knuckle down and work on the things that I needed to work on. And what things were those in particular, do you feel like? Um. I've always, mainly with driver, I've struggled with turning into my right hip properly. So my hips don't tend to move and I turn all the way to the top just with my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And then my right leg pops forward and my heel comes up and I'm kind of just stuck behind it. So mm -hmm. that's something that when I'm on the range, I've always been able to kind of do it. But as soon as I got on the course, it just went back to what it normally does. So I've had, it's been quite good in a way that for seven weeks, all I done was hit balls in a net and didn't see where they went. So right. <laughs> pretty much just make sure that I was doing what I needed to do with my hip and my foot. And it, it's, it's worked quite well. I mean, there's a bit of face control issue when we first went on the course. But <laughs> apart from that, it's been, it's been pretty quick to get back to kind of playing and scoring decently. That's great. Yeah, I, I saw some things. That I think it looked like you had a homemade net. Is that true that you were hitting into? Yeah, to start with, because my net hadn't arrived, I just <laughs> hung a duvet up over the washing line and it mm -hmm. falls into that. So, <laughs> yeah, and then my net arrived and I had kind of an, a, I guess, a proper setup, but as good as as good as I could make it, really. And mm -hmm. then I've got a putting mat in the in the bedroom, so nice. The putting I was able to do some decent work with. That's great. Yeah, and I saw a lot of some plane drills you were working on. I saw some things with shafts in the ground everywhere. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, the swing's looking fantastic. So we're excited for it to, uh, to get kicked into motion again. So, so I know one of the things I was just on, on with Frederick talking about, you know, the, the transition from being obviously a, even more than elite, you know, a, a, a very, very high level amateur to now being a professional. Like, let, I'd, I'd love to hear it out of your words. Like, what are you feeling about it? And, and how, how was that transition? Um. I think it well it was trickier than I thought it would be because you the thing that for me that was the big difference was I was I think set, uh, third or fourth in the world in the amateur rankings and mm -hmm. 
England golf kind of just managed you. And for me, I'd get sent an email that would say, OK, get to the airport at this time, get on a <laughs> plane and we'll do the rest kind of thing. You just go and play golf. And nice. Then, when you turn pro, especially when you're first starting out, um, if you haven't got the management team and things like that, you're, you're looking at, OK, I'm playing here. I'm going to fly Sunday to here. How do I get there? Where am I staying? Mm -hmm. Where it's uh, probably a year and a half, two years, someone else done that for me. Right. <laughs> so that was quite a big, that was quite a big change for me. And mm -hmm. I think the strength and depth in the fields, as you go up through the levels, it's just more people can win. It's, mm -hmm. it's different. It, you turn up to, um, say like a county event, there's, five people that can win you turn up to an England event there's 15 people that can win an international event there's 30 people that can win and then you turn up to a European tour event and there's 150 people that can win. <laughs> yeah for sure I mean, it's, it's a whole the, the depth of field is crazy so everybody's so good right <laughs> yeah and I mean I, I felt like personally at an amateur level I could make a few mistakes still make the cut be in a good position and have a chance to win but on tour, on the European tour and uh, PJ tour, when I played the Memorial at Mirfield Village, you hit one bad shot and you've gone from kind of a decent week where you could get up the leaderboard to miss cut. And it doesn't take it doesn't take a lot to be either side of the line. It's is it's that different? Is that tough mentally? Like how how is I mean, is that something that you know you just basically have to be that much more focused, or does that? make you change how you recover from a mistake or like you know what have you done mentally to, to prepare yourself for that um I think just for me trying to make little changes with my technique because I don't feel like well last year I struggled massively off the tee but that was that was a mixture of things really I started off technically not very good with driver and mm -hmm. then in the end I didn't actually think I could hit it straight so that <laughs> then you right. an issue altogether <laughs> right <laughs> um once I, once I got on top of that, probably around tour school last year, and then I got a good chance to work on it in America. Mm -hmm. um, Noah's actually watching one of the guys that I was practicing with out there, so that was quite cool. Nice. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I had plenty of time to work on it and get things in the right place. But for making cuts, I think you just got to forget about it. You, As an amateur, I turned up every week, and the goal was to win, and that was it. And there right. was nothing else. Whereas the first few events as a pro, and certainly some last year, when you get into a bad run, that to start with, you're like, oh, yeah, I'll just turn up and play and get in contention and try and win. But if you've missed three, four cuts in a row, suddenly you actually think about the cut line and you're looking at the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. That's something that I learned as the year went on, and it's something that I need to be cautious of when we get back playing is not looking at the bottom number. I need to be looking at the top of the leaderboard like I was as an amp. Well, and it feels like you've sorted things out just coming in as as hot as you were right up towards the end of everything. So that, that's fantastic. Yeah, and I've never been a quick starter, really. So it's, it's quite <laughs> new for me to be winning early in the year. I normally I normally peak quite late in the year. <laughs> so why do you think that is? Do you think that just you get more just it's all from experience and just from reps? Or why do you think you were always a late, a late, a late performer? Um. I think because I've done too much in, over the winter. I've got mm -hmm. better at managing my practice, not hitting too many balls and things like that. I feel like in the past, perhaps, I've practiced so much that my, I've got my game in a good shape, but I've actually not got the energy to put it together for the right amount of days. So right. I think that's been, been quite important for me, is kind of keeping tabs on how many balls I'm hitting, mm -hmm. trying not to get injured, which... Most of the injuries I've picked up are from hitting too many golf balls. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just things like that, managing my time better. Um, mm -hmm. I think the workouts, working on the right things, getting stronger. Mm -hmm. I think they're all things that, that help in order to get off to a quick start. You're prepped and kind of ready to go. And then yep. for me this year, I felt pretty good straight away, kind of back end of last year to start of this year that I'd, I was in a good place mentally off the tee and that gave me a good chance to mm -hmm. compete because I knew statistically on the European tour last year, I was up there for most other categories. Um, mm -hmm. The short game, the putting, I was quite a long way up the stats. So I knew as soon as I got driver in play, I was probably going to be in a good position to win. So yeah. That made it slightly easier. 
That's great. No, I love that. So talk, talk to me about your equipment a little bit. Have you been working on anything during the break or are you pretty dialed in? Um, I'd say I'm pretty dialed in. I tend not to tweak too much. Mm -hmm. um, so I've kind of had the same kind of setup for probably 10 years in terms of what irons and stuff and I use. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then the middle of last year is the first time I changed shaft. I'd used KBS for quite a long time and I went up to see Alex and Matt um, and we looked at the, the swing DNA and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I ended up with a Project X 6.5 and the spin numbers and dispersion were so much tighter and especially out of rough, I've always struggled with catching flyers mm -hmm. and they seem to have reduced somewhat since putting those shafts in place. So that's been, that's been massive for me. That's, um, that's pretty cool. We, we love to hear that, that you actually went through the shaft <coughs> optimizer and got to hit it and it, and it, it recommended something for you. Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's a shaft I've never been too keen on because I quite like the feel of a shaft being light and the Project X is quite a heavy shaft. Mm -hmm. um, so to, it took a bit of getting used to to start with, but I feel like I've, I've got everything in a really nice place set up wise. Wedge shafts and everything have been the same for five or six years now. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't really see a need to change them because I kind of never hit wedges full. So right. it's not like I need to mess around with them too much. I know, I know the numbers. I know which ones spin a lot, which ones don't and things like that. So that's been, that's been good. So are you the type that goes a little bit softer on your wedges, a little bit lighter, or, or what, what does your wedge setup look like? Um, I like spin. Okay. <laughs> I, like, I like having a lot of spin and then being able to take it off. So mm -hmm. for me, I use quite a soft golf ball. Um, I like to have, I'd rather be able to spin it loads and then take some off. Because mm -hmm. as soon as greens get firm, that's when you struggle. It's not when they're soft. Right. So for me, that's, that's been a good setup. And the only thing I do is I get Alex to grind off quite a bit of my 60 and 56 just so when I lay it open, it mm -hmm. doesn't look like the lead movies rise so far off the ground. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. Are you... Uh, I'm just going to grab a drink quickly. Yeah, absolutely. No worries. <laughs> I always so love... I don't end up coughing all the way. <laughs> no, no problem at all. So what's funny, the other day I was looking and European Tour was posting, um, you know, I think they've been doing a thing where they've been asking everybody about if you could have somebody's driving game, bunker game, whatever. I saw McIntyre comment on your, on your bunker game. Was there a bunker shot that led to that comment? Because your, your name was up there. It was, it was Tiger, <laughs> Phil, and then it was Scott Gregory right there. So I love seeing that on there. But I want to know what led to that. Um, I think Bob's been lucky enough to have witness quite a lot of my good bunker shots <laughs> <laughs> he's been the victim of them <laughs> he definitely was at fourth court uh, <laughs> i think i was nine out of ten in sound saves that day so that's fantastic well and i and i know you've done a couple instagram if you go back on on scott's instagram page you can see some bunker <laughs> lessons and short game lessons and drills and stuff to work on that are really really good stuff so and he didn't teach me everything I knew. <laughs> <laughs> so how about on the on the driver side? What uh, what's your driver setup look like right now? Um, I've got the S two two S T two hundred, just a standard one, not with weights on. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of wanted to go to something simple that I couldn't mess around with too much. Um, I feel like last year I tried to tweak and change things a little bit too much. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> sorry. No, you're good. I changed things up a little bit, um, slightly more loft than my old driver. Mm -hmm. um, the sweet spot's a little bit bigger on that driver, so my off-center hits are straighter. Um, Shaft-wise, I kept it very similar to what I already had in my old driver. Mm -hmm. um, so we didn't really have to change too much. The only thing we had to do, because I'm not using the head with the weights that I can put right at the front, Alex had to put some hot melt in. Mm -hmm. And then basically find the lowest lofted head available in Europe. <laughs> Try to bring it down a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I've got it playing at about 7.7, 7.75 at the moment. So, yeah, are, getting it airborne is not my issue. Right. <laughs> are you... um? Are you one of those players who is that throughout your bag that you know you have no trouble getting launched, so you're always trying to bring it down? Or is that I mean, I guess growing up playing over in the UK, I'm sure there's a lot of that, a lot more of that than there is over here. 
Yeah, I'd say I'd probably hit it high anyway, naturally. It's it's um, something I've never struggled with. But like I say, I actually like quite a lot of spin. So I'd rather it be high and spinny and then try and take it down. Mm -hmm. I just feel like a lot of people struggle with, if you've got Fern Green's front pin, a lot of people struggle to stop it. So to be able to actually hit it high with spin is quite mm -hmm. an advantage. Yeah, that's great. So do you know when your next <clears throat> tournament will be? Is, is, all that, is all that sorted out yet or you're still kind of in limbo? Um, a little bit in limbo, really. There's a couple of announcements coming out for UK mini tours, uh, Clutch Tour, which is the one that I won on just before. Mm -hmm. um, then there's Jamiga um, and TP Tour and the 2020 Pro Tour, all little mini tours in the UK that are kind of starting up in the next month, month and a half. So okay. it'll probably be a kind of a play as much as I can of them and then see what happens with Challenge Tour because I honestly can't see what they're going to do. They've obviously with the European Tour just announced the six event swing in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of Challenge Tour, it's going to be hard all the time you've got, you've got a quarantine. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. And I've said to a lot of members at the club, I'm just going to try and kind of make sure that the game's in good shape and I'm ready to go as soon as they give us the thumbs up really yeah well we're we're excited for it to get back going i know some of the some of the tournaments are going to kick off relatively soon here in the states but again some, now they're canceling <laughs> others as well so it's it's a bit of a mess right now but um but we're excited to see your career and where it takes off and we're very very excited to have you as a member of our team so i can't wait to uh to get together and and just talk equipment with you because I, I could do that all day long so yeah <laughs> Well, I won't keep you too long, but I really appreciate you taking the time and, and talking to us. And, and yeah, more than anything, let us know what we can do for you. Let us know what's not working out. I know Al's on here right here. I hear, saw him commenting yeah. on making grinds and pull, <laughs> pulling lofts down on your drivers. But definitely um, let us know what we can do to help. And we're excited for this journey to see how far this takes you. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Alex has got a couple of orders in from me for whenever he can get in the workshop <laughs> that's great well my bladed free iron is next up oh excellent <laughs> something we don't do much of over here <laughs> no <laughs> awesome well scott i really really appreciate the time and let's um yeah we'll we'll touch base soon so thanks uh, thanks yeah, everyone yeah. for, for uh for coming in and thank you and we'll talk soon yeah thank you very much speak to you soon yep be good will do bye bye Awesome. Really good to talk to Scott. And if you guys didn't see this whole thing, go back and we're going to post this and you'll be able to watch the whole thing. But such a good player who is going to be a great player. So thanks for, thanks for him giving me that time. And we look forward to, uh, to watching more. And hopefully you'll see us back on here soon. Talk to more equipment. Thanks, guys.